Huh. Yes, it's recording. <clears throat> yes, I'm running transport vehicle. It's transporting um, paper money, which is basically useless because it has no interesting value whatsoever. But, um, alright, I'll walk over there. Folks, I want to point your attention to something. What I've noticed is that pagans cannot rule themselves. The only thing pagans do is they have those holidays like Saturnalia, um, Samhain, which today we call uh, Halloween, and Saturnalia is what we call Christmas. They have the day of Thanksgiving when they give thanks to the Mothers, the, the Goddess of Fertility. Let's continue. Um, you, pagans have all those holidays and only on those holidays is there kind of peace between them. But even that peace is fake. So, what do pagans have? Pagans don't have any peace. You see? And every unbeliever is basically a pagan. Because every unbeliever, you know, every unbeliever in one way or the other gets involved into witchcraft. Either they are a silent partner, a silent promoter of witchcraft by denying its existence, or by minimizing witchcraft, or their active agents into witchcraft. So all unbelievers are pagan, okay? And unbelievers cannot rule themselves. I want to give an example of this. You, you might have heard of that legend of King Arthur. You see, pagans, you know, when they are in the higher ranks of their religions, they often bait and baptize themselves in blood. Whether it's human blood or animal blood, they baptize in blood and then they will they receive a new name. You see a new identity. So they have their own natural name. I mean they have the names that their parents gave to them. For example, uh, let's say you have a witch and her name is Elisa. And her family name is Windsor. So Elisa Windsor. Okay. And let's say she gets baptized into the higher ranks of you know of the dark arts. She might you know choose the name Snow White, for example. Why? Because snow has to do with winter and white has to do with white magic. So pagans they choose a counter a false name an alias by which they represent themselves after they get baptized in the higher spheres of the occult realm. So, many pagans do that, many kings also. And often those kings, they operate under that alias, not under their real name. So, when you want to investigate history, you will not find any record, written record about someone named Arthur find it because it's a pagan alias okay so who was the real King Arthur well the real King Arthur was a guy named Merovius he was a king of the Franks his kingdom you know kept his kingdom in included the Netherlands what today call Belgium Luxembourg and northern France Okay. And um, he, he, his father and mother were both into the occult. His mother was an infamous witch, to say it softly. And um, this guy made a deal with Satan to establish a kingdom on the British Isles and Islands. Because the Roman Empire, you know, was, you know, say, expelled from the British tribes and Irish clans, they've banned the Roman Empire since the 406, 
in the beginning of the 5th century and it was the same time that Merovius was living and he wanted to restore the West Roman Empire on the British Isles by making himself king over those kingdoms of course. To make a long story short, it worked. Merovius and his troops they've murdered a lot of men, especially in Scotland. They, they've ruined villages and cities, they raped a lot of women and children and they've dismembered them and threw their organs all over the place. So it became a, a, one big mess over there. And he practiced more kinds of mind control and, you know, um, how do I say, a traumatic spells upon the people's time. Well, he was, you know, he was betrayed by one of his generals from Scotland. stories about King Arthur, how wonderful he was. And never told you the truth about the real King Arthur. And um, another thing is, though those pagans, you see, after King Arthur died, or after Mary of died, the pagans on the British Isles began to fight each other for the next 600 years, and they ruined the whole place. So yes, they wanted to preserve the ancient world, yet there's the same people that want to preserve the ancient world, destroy the ancient world by their lack of unity. Just as, like I said before, pagans cannot rule themselves. You see? So Christians didn't have to go out and destroy all those pagan temples, all those demonic portals. The devil worshippers worship themselves destroys their kingdoms. So that's why the Lord said, Vengeance is mine, I'll repay. Because God will use the anger and hostility of unbelievers. He will use them to bring down their own pride and their own systems. So let God do what God is doing. Well, that's what I want to say in this video. Pagans cannot rule themselves. Okay. And then, um, Merovius, he is the found, he is the ancestor of the Stuart and Spencer Royal House of Scotland and of the Merovian bloodline throughout Europe. So his descendants are still living among us, but they are, they are the same as their ancestor. Antichrist against God wanting to restore the ancient order, it won't work. The only thing that organizations try to do is to restore the ancient world, to restore antiquity in a more advanced manner. It will fail, collapse, and the Lord Jesus Christ.